Hey all, Scott here, and I'm only 12 virgin points away from being eligible for a V card. I need to find the quickest possible way to not get laid. <laughs> if I wanted to get laid, I'd talk about Donkey Kong Barrel Blast for 10 minutes, but nope. Today I gotta stick with the trends to nab my virgin points with ease, but how exactly will I do that? By looking at the most viral things on the planet, of course, and the only thing more viral than influenza has got to be this garbage. You know, the games you see played on YouTube by screaming people with dyed hair and videos with all caps titles. Yep, viral video games. You may ask what constitutes a game being viral. Uh, I'm mainly talking the stuff that's taken the world by storm within the past decade or so that really wouldn't have gone anywhere without the internet. Whether it be because of online multiplayer, seeing reactions to people playing the games, sharing theories surrounding them, you know, that kind of stuff. Well, let's plop into it. These are viral sensations that people can't get enough of or they could get enough of until they got enough of. You ever wander around in the woods at night and worry that Benito Mussolini is still on the loose and is coming after you? Well, Slender is the closest we can get to that experience. I'm sorry, Slender, the eight pages. When this game hit it big, it was simply titled Slender and then they made another game, Oh shit, they made another game? Uh, well, with the introduction of a sequel, they subtitled this one, The Eight Pages. The game stars this flashlight, some grass, a few trees, and... Oh shit, it's a white guy! You have to collect eight pages scattered across this small forest that's really easy to get lost in. These pages feature all this chicken scratch on them, which could mean anything. Collecting pages is basically all we have to do, in addition to avoiding Slender Man, a supernatural creature known for orangutan arms and child abduction. The thing is, I don't find Slender Man in general scary. How can you be scared of something without a face? He can't even fucking sneeze. The only thing that's kind of scary about this is when Slender Man randomly appears, the musician passes out on the piano. And even then, that's just a jump scare. Nothing really sticks with you at all. I won't say the game doesn't have its tense moments. Walking into this small bathroom, for example, is pretty freaky. Like, you know, it's easy to get cornered in here. But the game just relies on jump scares. You try to collect all eight pages, and even when you do, all that happens is Slender Man eventually does whatever the hell this is. Happy Wheels is a physics-based game that plays in your web browser. You can choose from a variety of vehicle-driving characters with a seemingly unlimited supply of user-created levels at your disposal. Many stages are filled with hazards that can brutally wound or kill you, which adds to the fun. Definitely one of the most entertaining games to play in your browser. But I mean... You know those bears they sell at Hot Topic? Yeah, they made a game out of them. Five Nights at Freddy's is all about looking both ways and stopping Chuck E. Cheese robots from screaming. I never liked this series. This title has some of the most brutally simple gameplay out there. You have to keep an eye on your power levels and make sure you're not overusing your means of monitoring and stopping these things from giving you a scare right in front of your face. I mean, yeah, you can analyze the game all you want, say how its simple gameplay is what makes it so interesting and well-designed, or how the sweet, sweet lore of the series is what keeps you coming back. Not me, though, I never personally found appeal in the series. I'll just give it the coveted Not My Thing Award. Now, the developer Scott Cawthon made a sequel, so I could definitely try out that one to see if it grabs me. And if that one doesn't do it, how about this one? Or this one? Maybe this one? This one might do it. Hello, this is Scott Cawthon. Stop! Guap is a human simulator that shows us just how amazing it is that we can all move. You have to control your muscles with the Q, W, O, and P keys on the keyboard, and as a self-proclaimed walker, I have to say, this game really does emphasize the struggles us humans have with walking sometimes. You ever just this, everybody? Finally, the cure for all sex. Minecraft. I made lows. I've actually never really gotten into Minecraft. I played a little on the iPad, but that was about it, and I dropped it after playing it a few times. From what I've gathered, you play as geometry and you, uh, just kinda do whatever you want. You craft whatever you want, build whatever you want. It's truly a sandbox game. There is this survival mode where these zombies come out at night, which makes things more interesting. Lucky for me, I'm a fucking genius. Nothing can stop me from up here, damn it. Next up, we're looking at Roblox. So I've never been in the know on what a Roblox is, so I'm signing up under the name anybody like Roblox? Just a question. After getting shot into the site, it turns out Roblox is a game creation tool where players share their games made using the Roblox Studio. After finally jumping into a game, I can officially say I am more confused now than I was before playing, and nobody will answer my questions. So we can waddle around and jump, and let me ask you, does this make you feel okay? But man, with enough determination, I can totally not get laid by playing this. I'm a patented laid scale, I hereby give Roblox 4 sex out of 10. Doki Doki Literature Club, a horror game that isn't just due to cowering in fear when your parents walk in on you playing it. But let's throw that genre out of the window and go into the game blind. 
Whew, it's imaginary sex of the game. I'll definitely give this a download. Huh. Uh, forget that warning. I'm going with a name that'll really help me in the long run with swooning these girls over. This is a dating sim visual novel type game where we talk to these girls, speak to them, and have conversations. It's like I'm really trying to date a cartoon character. And there's so many to choose from. Sayori, our longtime best friend. Yuri, the shy one. Natsuki, the bitch. Monica, the leader of the bunch. Which one could I possibly choose? Oh, that made my decision easier. What I admire so much about Doki Doki is that it takes the concept of a deceiving game that acts like it's one thing when it's really another and goes farther with it than I think any piece of media ever has. It takes a fair amount of time until the psychological horror elements nudge their ways in, and that allows the game to create this sense of trust with the player. By the time everything's about to go down, I feel like most players were like, yup, this is my game. I'm totally gonna date the shit out of- Jesus Christ! That is how you scare a player, and it's done really well. The only major problem I have with Doki Doki is that it really demands a totally blind playthrough for you to get the most out of it. Thing is, that's almost impossible. We have a warning in the beginning basically saying, this game is f***ed, turn back. And with all the hubbub about this game online, even if you didn't know this was a horror game, I think you'd at least expect that something was up with it. You could have a friend set up the game for you where they say, hey, play this. But even at that point, I think most people would respond, why the hell are you making me play this? What's wrong with it? The game works best in this perfect world where you're playing it because you just wanted to play a visual novel dating sim, but were thrown for a loop when things get murdery. Regardless of a totally blind playthrough being somewhat unobtainable, Doki Doki Literature Club is a really smart game that does horror incredibly well. Baldi's Basics is stupid. What does this game squirt onto the internet? Oh, another, it isn't what it initially seems to be game. It goes from educational game to not that. I assume it's trying to pull off horror, but it just ends up feeling like a lackluster and a half attempt at what Doki Doki Literature Club did. Doki Doki deceives the player by comforting them in this world of pure anime, maybe sprinkling in some hints here and there, but finally hitting the player with something so out of left field terrifying that it works incredibly well as a horror game. Baldi's Basics is like if Doki Doki started with one line of simple dialogue and then blam death. That's not nearly as scary, and it just devalues the entire point of the game even existing. Like we do a math problem and then, uh-oh, the teacher is chasing us. This one's just pretty lame to me. Now brace yourselves, because I am about to lose all credibility. That's right, guys. I'm finally playing Fortnite. I've seen the requests. And would you believe it only takes this long to not get laid? I tried to name myself, and may I ask, how many skarts are there in the world? It seemed like every name I tried, they had a problem with until I finally landed on a winner. Anyways, Fortnite is this battle royale game where you're just trying to be the last player alive or last group alive. Things are off to a great start with this sky bus. I glide down, and you know what? What's the rush? We're gonna take our time with this one. I reach the ground and come face to face with my first enemy in the game. I use his organs to build build a house, and safety is an understatement. There's this cool portal thing that seems interesting. Oh, f f f Oh, finally another person. Here's some homicide. Oh, we have another. Shit, somebody grab a Kodak. For max effectiveness, I'm just gonna keep swinging this X indefinitely. Oh, damn it. It's easy to see why these games went viral. They all have elements that make them easily understandable, interesting, or entertaining to watch others play. But does that make them automatically good games? Ah! <laughs> no! A lot of these are one-trick ponies, and just because these games hit it big doesn't necessarily mean they're good. It's obvious that for many independent developers to get their names out there these days, they feel the need to make games like this that really appeal to the modern climate of the internet with reaction videos and online multiplayer being the craze. It's just in many of these games cases, they prioritize the idea of becoming viral in comparison to simply being a decent game. Not all of them are like this, but many are, and it's kinda why I don't see myself jumping aboard whenever small games like these hit it big. With that being said, don't spew hatred over a game just because it's popular. Fortnite and Minecraft get barfed on all the time just because they're huge. Listen, I played both of these, and I can easily tell you they're both high-quality games. They may not be my thing, and that's perfectly fine. It's also fine if you actually immensely dislike the games, but come on, it's pretty obvious when people are just complaining because of popularity. That's all fine and good, but I'm only one virgin point away from being eligible for a V card. Uh, maybe just mentioning viral games can give me that one point. Uh, there's Facade, Getting Over It, Amnesia, Donkey Kong Barrel Blood. No, 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 no! I'm never gonna be a virgin at this rate.